can change heads in a few hours. Despite the seeming calmness and traditional formality, the stockbrokers themselves are men of shrewd judgment, sure. worldwide contacts, and worldwide respect. Mm. Indeed, businessmen from all parts of the globe channel their affairs through the city of London because they know they can rely on the experience and impartiality of these experts. For experts they are. Experts what? in trade, commerce, and international finance. In an age of specialists, they are specialists in all the various manifestations of monetary exchange and big business. And no matter what financial crisis may beset this country of ours, the London Stock Exchange will continue to thrive and prosper. Rot! A world of its own with its own laws and its own code of gentlemanly conduct. Sickening! It's as changeless and unchangeable as Lords, Ascot, or Westminster Abbey. Muck! Rubbish! Fertilizer! I didn't speak. Oh. What would you like to do this evening? Very good idea. I said, what would you like to do? Hmm? This evening, what do you want to do? Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm? Would you like to go out or would you rather stay in? Well, it's up to you. I don't mind. Well, neither do I. Would you like to get the pictures? Yeah, if you like. Make a decision, David, please. Well, uh, what's on? At the pictures? No, on the box. Amateur boxing? International swimming from Glasgow. BBC Two. An introduction to molecular biology. Oh, it's Thursday. Look, let me see. What about the cinema? Doris Day at the Rialto. Oh, don't like her. Oh, yes, so you said. It's all those freckles, that all-American girl look. I find that very distasteful. Oh, well, so much for the Rialto. Can't think why you like her so much. I well, just do. I think she's nice. Hmm. And she speaks very well of you. Oh, well, how do you know that? You never even met her. I bet she's all for Uncle Sam. In her cleanliness and cheerful songs before breakfast. Uh, it makes me ill. One of LBJ's model citizens. I'll tell you whether you may find her nice and inoffensive, but it repels me utterly. All right, I won't force you to go. Well, well if you like. I mean, if you really want to. No, you'll only fidget and grumble all the time. No, I won't. Yes, you will. You always do. Mm, please yourself. What about the Ritz? Uh, crab monsters from Planet Something. And teenage beat party. God. There's 
always the classic, of course. They're having a Judy Garland season. You don't like her either. Her voice sets your teeth on edge. Well, it does. That's that then, isn't it? I suppose we could always go out for a drink. Where? Hub. Would you like to? Yeah, if you like. Well, you suggested it. Oh, Hilary, I'd be very grateful for your views on the matter, please. No, darling, it's up to you. But this is ridiculous. I mean, two grown people seriously discussing what to do. It's, it's, it's the paralyzing effect of over-affluence, you know, that's what it is. You wouldn't find a couple of coal miners with these problems, oh dear me, no. They'd be too busy worrying about silicosis, unemployment, and the rising cost of living. And that's life, Hillary, that's life, reality, and what do we know about it? Nothing! <laughs> Well, now, what do you want? What do you suggest? Well, it depends what you like for lunch, really. Oh, it varies. <laughs> me too. Sometimes I have quite a lot, and sometimes I have hardly anything at all. Just like me. So it doesn't matter very much, really. Um, what about the veal? Mm, that'd be gorgeous. Or the prawn? No, oh, don't mind, honestly. Um, veal, then? Mm, super. I mean, if you prefer prawns, you <laughs> would tell me. <laughs> really? All righty. Uh, no, I think we will have the prawns. It's more suitable for lunch somehow. The darling. Good. What about a little drinky pool? Oh, with our meal, you mean? Oh, why not? Super. Wine? That'd be nice. Uh, red, white, rosé? Um... Uh, you <laughs> choo uh, Well, something light and undemanding, I feel. Uh, rosé. Mm. Uh, please. Oh, this is very pleasant, Carrie. Um, refreshing, you know what I mean? I know. Poor old Hillary. She does her best. It's not really her fault. We seem to have lost the knack of communication. We talk in long private monologues. Poor David. Poor David, indeed. Taken for granted, ignored, misunderstood. But you take this Darlington documentary I'm directing, for instance. I mean, do you think that Hillary understands what I'm trying to do? Of course not. Do, do you think that she appreciates the strain of a job like that? Not in a million years. And it is a strain, my darling, I can tell you. I mean, I'm probing into the very souls of these people. Now, one needs sympathy for a job like that. That's why a creative person needs a creative relationship. That's why I need you, my darling. I shall miss you next week. I'll miss you too. I shall miss you most terribly. When are you going to Darlington, darling? Tuesday. Mind you, it is only for a couple of days. When are you going to Darlington, darling? Oh, you've already asked me that. When? Tonight, sometime? I haven't. But I remember it is. I have not. Tuesday, for three days. I'm having lunch with Henry on Tuesday. Good. They want me to do a sequel. Really? A sequel? A sequel. Jolly well done. You say the sales have been most encouraging. Oh, marvellous. Sequel to what? Dobbo and the Little People. What are you going to call that? Son of Dobbo? <laughs> Just because you find my books an embarrassment. Oh, it was a joke. Because they don't reach your high, dizzy intellectual standards. Be silly. One of these days I shall write a story about a Marxist mouse. That should please you. Oh, but now, Hillary, I, I like your stories. I think they're very good. And children, I'm told, adore them. Thank you. That's most encouraging. I mean it. Mm, I'm sure. Henry said something about an American tour. What? A lecture tour of the universities. You mean, you mean for you? Mm -hmm. well, right. What would you lecture about, pray? Children's books, my books. 
They're very highly thought of over there. And isn't that typical? Isn't that just typical? The American devotion for meaningless trivia. With all due respect to you, my darling. I can just see it. Yes, I can just see it. A room full of over-muscled young men and nubile undergraduates. All earnestly taking notes while you tell them stories about Snow White and Double and the little people. My God, what a decadent lot they are. You're not going, of course. No, I'm not going. I think not, indeed. Oh, I do wish you'd fix this switch. What switch? On my bedside lamp. Oh, yeah. It's dangerous. Nonsense. Well, it is. Fix it tomorrow. <laughs> Always tomorrow. Well, you don't expect me to get my toolkit out and do it tonight, do you? Toolkit? Huh. Hammer, pair of pliers, half a dozen crooked nails, and a screwdriver. I would if you like. No, don't bother. It's not worth the effort. I thought of a marvelous title today. What for? My program. Darlington, pulse beat of industrial Britain. That has a tough, abrasive quality. I think that's very good. Hmm. I often wondered why you became a television director. Now I know. <laughs> If you didn't have Roz, you wouldn't have to keep buying her forgiveness presents, would you? Thank you. Well, she started it, Carrie. I mean, she needled me. Oh, poor darling. You can say that again. And at half past twelve at night, too. Oh, my marriage is in a mess. Perhaps you ought to do something to cheer her up. Cheer who up? Hillary. She's so miserable. Well, no, she's not miserable. She's on top of the world. They've asked her to write a sequel. What, a sequel to Dobbo? What else? How super. Why super? Just super. I think it's marvellous. Do, do you mean that you've read it? Of course, darling. Really? Over and over again. Uh, and you actually enjoyed it? Mm, I adored it. I think she's terribly brilliant. I really do. Mm. Well, there you are, darling. Thank you, darling. I only wish I could meet her. Oh, no, Carrie. Oh, don't worry, darling. I know it's impossible. For heaven's sake, never say things like that. Sorry. Well, it's... it's... not that I'm... That about it. It's just that, you know, the very proof of our relationship proves that it's all right, but you tend to display a certain disturbing naivety on occasion. Now, I, I'm not criticizing you, understand? I'm merely pointing it out. Hi, Sean. That's a, a very groovy shirt you're wearing. It's a bird. Oh? And made in Hackney. <laughs> they make it from bits of old steamrollers, you know. Good heavens. It's a Dobbo celebration present. Oh, thank you, uh, darling. <laughs> well, I bought it because I was so beastly to you last night. Were you? Yes, horrid. Oh, by the way, we had a letter from Giles. About time, too. He's got ingrowing toenails. Charming. Mm, means he's going to miss the rugger this term. What the heck's wrong with that boy's feet, anyway? He's already had corns, chillblains, athlete's foot, a sprained ankle, and now ingrowing toenails. He gets it from you, darling. No, my feet are perfectly all right. It's that ghastly mother of yours and our fallen arches. There's no need to be rude. I am not being rude. Yes, you are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you like the bird, then? Very nice bird. Oh, I'm very glad. How about us doing something rather special tonight? Going out for a drink. Would you like that? I told you, darling, I've got to see that man. What man? The man from Canada who's going to serialize the book, remember? No. Yes, you do, so don't pretend. I've put your supper on the tray. You can bring it in here and watch television. Yeah, that sounds very exciting, I must say. All by myself, cold meat and salad and some crummy old film on the box. An evening of rare delight. Lucky old me. Yeah. <laughs>
Hope you don't mind, darling. It's only cold meat and salad. I have no idea you'd be able to come round tonight. Cold meat and salad will be perfect. I thought we could have it on a train, watching television. Absolutely perfect. Oh, I didn't have to tell her anything. She had to go out herself. How super! Mm. <laughs> oh. uh, what was I saying before you had to go into the kitchen? You were telling me all about your clever program. Ah, yes. Darlington. Now, as I see it, Darlington is a focal point of the expanding industrial northeast. Now, we know all about the economic factors, but what do we know about the people, the young people, the teenagers? What are their hopes? Mm. Mm. Ambitions, plans for the future. What are they thinking? What do they believe in? That's what the program's all about, and I think it could be very good. Perhaps even better than the Hounslow one. Remember that? Mm. Mm. Portrait of the affluent subtopia. Uh. Very pleased with that. Uh. But this one's got another dimension. Uh. It's a challenge. I'm coming to grips with the very guts of the young working classes. Mm. It's something I can get my teeth into. Oh, sounds scrummy, darling. Simply scrummy. <laughs> <laughs> Am I in your way? No. Nope. I'll move if you want me to. I'm doing the laundry. Oh. Ah, th that chap from the Sunday thingamy came to see me yesterday. They're doing a piece on mass media communication. It, it, it should be interesting. Um, I had a, a chat with him. Uh, they took a photograph. I, I'll be in the Sunday paper. Bully. And I told him all about my clever wife, of course. Of course. What did you tell him? Well, I said, I, I mean, I told him, I told him that you wrote children's stories all about Dubbo and the little people. But that made him laugh. No, on the contrary, he was very impressed. How kind. By the way, there's some clean shirts in the airing cupboard. I thought you'd like to do your own packing. Yes, all right. Hillary. Hillary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about last night. Last night? Well, you see, I suddenly felt all enclosed, you know, shut in. I just had to go out anywhere. Just me by myself on the streets, but, but alone, you know. Until half past two in the morning. Oh, well, I lost all track of time. It was strange somehow. It was curiously peaceful. Lumberjack. The toilet preparations for a man who is really a man. Oh, well. Yes, David. Yes, darling. But what do you want? But what sort of present? Oh, you mean for Hillary? Oh, I don't know. There's all sorts of things. Dolls, ashtrays, pendants. Oh, a pendant? Um, anything from 12 and 6 to 10 guineas. About 50 shillings. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, all right, my darling. Yes, I'll bring it with me. Yes, darling. And I love you, too. It's a going away present. Oh, David. <laughs> it's a I shall miss you in stinking old Darlington present. You are extravagant. Oh, nothing very much. Oh, you got this from Granny's attic, too. How do you know? It says so on the box. Oh, really? I hadn't noticed. Very fashionable. So I hear. What's wrong? Well, I don't like you knowing. Knowing what? Where I got it. Um, it does take away from the surprise, doesn't it? <laughs> don't be silly. <laughs> Aren't you going to open it? Oh, yes, of course. An unusual box, isn't it? <laughs> Do you like it? Yes. Good. Uh, it's very with it. <laughs> uh, 
I could change it if you wanted me to. Uh, no, honestly. Uh, are you sure now? I mean, you would tell me if you didn't like it. Yes, darling, I love it. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh. Oh, good, yeah. good. Well, I must be off. See you soon. Yes, take care. I will. Well done, boy. Well done. Yes, I, I hope so. Uh, my husband bought me a present from here. Yes. Well, it's not exactly the sort of thing I'd go out and buy for myself. Oh, you'd like to change it? If I may. Yes, of course, madam. Oh, thank you. It's very kind. I it's a pendant. Mm -hmm. Some people might think it's nice, but I think it's rather hideous. I can't think why he chose it. He's got such good taste as a rule. Oh, there we are. written all over her face. Thirteen children, not a loo in the house. My God, have you seen this? Eight pound, twelve and six for half a dozen bottles of claret? Oh, it's disgusting. So anyway, there was this woman. A really remarkable person. It was a real privilege to talk to her, Hillary. Uh, not that she said very much, poor soul. Life had beaten into a jelly. But her hands, you should have seen her hands. All scarred by years of poverty and and, and toil. I took great close-ups of them. Huge close-ups of those wrinkled, eloquent hands. Oh, what an image. Oh, coffee, just what the traveler needs. How about you, my darling? Anything happened to you? Nothing much. Nothing at all? Well, just the usual routine events. Such as? Our lunch with Jane on Wednesday, tea with Alice yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we had a letter from Giles. He's got boils. Oh. You and your toxic family. And the man came to mend the gramophone. Oh, good. What was wrong with it? It needed a new valve. Just what I thought. She was here almost an hour. Who oh, was? The gramophone man. Oh. Told me all about his car, his mortgage, his leaking roof, his father's blood pressure, and his sister's phantom pregnancy. Fascinating. And he was terribly impressed to hear that you were in television. Really? He considers himself quite an expert on the subject. He thinks that most of the programs are either too highbrow or too right-wing. Good for him. And the reason he thinks he's an expert is because his uncle's brother-in-law once lived next door to Norman Bourne's cousin. Really, that is interesting. Um, I think I'd better go and ring the office. Yes, darling. Just a check. Darling, it's me. How are you, my sweetheart? Oh, good, good. That's splendid. Hmm? You did what? What do you mean? When did you? Look, I don't understand. Uh, we can't talk about it now, Lloyd. Uh, what about a spot of lunch tomorrow? Uh, yeah, well, I look forward to that. Um, well, bye-bye, old chap. Uh, see, see you then. Uh, Lloyd. What is the matter, darling? You look dreadfully pale. Oh, no, 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 no. Bright as a button. Bright as a button. But it is possible, isn't it? No, never. 
Not old Hillary. She wouldn't latch on if it was staring her right in the face. If she found us in bed together, she'd think I was in need of the rest. She'd assume that I'd forgotten to take my iron pills or something. But she might suspect. Why should she? Why did she come into the shop? Oh, we don't know it was her. Not definitely. That pendant was handmade. We haven't got another one like it. So she did come into the shop, but to change the pendant. Now, there's nothing significant about that, is there? I thought I was going to die. You can imagine. Let's have a little dance. Embarrassing. What was? She said she didn't like it. Like what? The pendant. Embarrassing? I chose it. No, no. She didn't like it. Carrie, I'm not really with you at all. It's an immaculate pendant. It's absolutely super. I've no idea you're married to a woman like that. Like what? That sort of taste. Well, I don't see that Hillary's taste in pendants should so upset you. Well, it's not your taste. Okay, that's fair enough, but there's no reason to be disturbed. It's a difference, that's all. What do you mean? It just does. Oh, Carrie, for heaven's sake. Well, it does. So you didn't like it? What? The film? No, I did not. It had very good reviews. I'm glad. I found it very interesting. Dave. I did. You were as bored as I was. Nonsense. It wasn't just a film about Sicilian peasants. It, it was about man. Oh. And I had a great feeling of humanity. I loathe films where the women wear slips and the men just grunt. <laughs> that's a silly thing to say, my dear, but that's a stupid generalization. And the subtitles were ludicrous. I thought it had compassion. Why didn't you wear the pendant? I told you. You evaded the question. It doesn't go with that dress. Why not? Just doesn't, that's all. I don't think you like the pendant. Oh, of course I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. And I don't think you intend to wear it. Now ever. I'm just being childish. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You haven't mended the switch yet, have you? What switch? On my bedside lamps. Switch. Sorry, I, I, I forgot. I, I'll do it tomorrow. Huh. I will, I promise. Why didn't you wear the pendant? I'm tired, David. I want to go to sleep. I think it's terribly unfair of them. You should have said no. And I've got to reshoot some of the interviews. Out of focus, indeed. What the heck do they know about it? I mean, any fool can shoot in focus. It's their old-fashioned bourgeois concepts that are ruining the medium. You're spending more time in Darlington than you are with me. Well, it shouldn't be long, just a couple of days. Do you think you can last that long without me? I'll try. Oh, oh David, don't. Oh. I'm sorry about the other afternoon. No, it was my fault. It wasn't. It was mine. I was so silly. <laughs> no, nonsense. Look, look here. Here's two pounds ten. Go and buy that damn pendant for yourself. Oh, darling, I couldn't. Please, as a going away present. Yeah. Darling, David, you are stupid. So... Ah, so are you. <laughs> Come and say goodbye before you go. I will. Word of honor. Word of honor. I think it's rotten. I'm very angry, David. I really am. How often do we go out to a party together? How often? And now when I've accepted the invitation and made all the arrangements, you just stroll in and say you've got to go to Darlington. Again. No apologies, no warning, nothing. You might at least have phoned me from the office. I said you might at least have phoned me from the office. I heard, I heard. In any case, I thought you'd finished with Darlington. They changed their minds. I haven't even noticed my dress. What dress? This dress. 
What's wrong with it? It's new. It's very nice. You don't really care what I look like, do you? Of course I do. No, you don't. I've already said you look very nice. For my age. Well, I didn't say that. No, but you implied it. Well, we're none of us getting any younger, are we? There are some men who would find me very attractive. Of course there are. Sexy, even. Who are we talking about now? The gramophone man, for instance. What gramophone man? The one who came the other day. Well, what did he do? He chatted me up. He did what? He chatted me up, and he was quite young, too. Hilary, are you trying to tell me that the gramophone man made love to you or something? Oh, don't be so stupid. He, he made me feel attractive, that's all. He made me feel desirable. Is this the type who lives next door to Norman Bourne's cousin? No, it was his uncle's brother-in-law. And he made you feel desirable. Which is more than you ever do. How do you mean? I mean what I say. You take no notice of me. You don't see things. You treat me so I'm part of the furniture. I noticed the pendant the other night. I was not wearing it. But that's what I mean. I noticed that. Well, bully for you, David. It must have been a great effort. But it... I... it... Oh... I don't go now. I shall miss my train. All right. Off you go. And it's the last time we use that firm. I'm not having their randy gramophone mechanics carrying on like that. I will. Be good. I promise. When I do come back, let's do something very special. Would you like that? Mm. What should we do? Theatre? Cinema? Dinner? You choose. I know. Let's go to one of Eric's protest evenings at Crouch Inn. They're doing an improvised dance drama about Vietnam. It should be fascinating. Would you like that? Mm, strummy. I must go. Taxi's waiting. No. Oh, Carrie, darling. We've achieved the most wonderfully creative relationship. I oh, know, my darling. Isn't it wonderful? Good morning. Oh, good morning, madam. Good morning. I don't suppose you remember. Yes, I do, yes. I, I came in about a pendant. Yes, how clever of you to remember. No, not really. Well, actually, I was wondering. Well, yes? I've only just noticed. What? You're wearing it. Wearing it? <laughs> yes, I'm wearing it. Uh, when you brought it back, I thought how nice. Well, how nice it looked, I mean. So you bought it for yourself? Well, I was... Uh, yes, I did. I see. I don't suppose you have any more? Sorry. Any more pendants like that? Oh, no, no, I'm afraid not. You know I told you my husband bought it for yes. me. Yes. Well, the other evening he mentioned it, asked why I wasn't wearing it. Oh, how embarrassing. For some extraordinary reason, it seems very important to him. So as he's gone away on a business trip for a couple of days, I thought I'd try and buy it back. But he's due home tonight, so it looks as though I'm going to be unlucky. I am sorry. 
Never mind. I shall just tell him the whole story. Perhaps the two of us could come in together and choose something else. Oh, no. Uh, yes. Look, if it's all right with you, um, if you don't mind, you're very welcome to, please. No, I wouldn't dream of it. Well, I've only worn it about twice. <laughs> it's not that. I'll probably be getting some more in soon. No, I couldn't. It's very kind of you, but really. I'd but I'd like I... you to have it, please. I could do something in return. Oh, no, you mustn't think of it. I'd like to. You mustn't. I mean it. Just wrap it up. When do you have lunch? Beg your pardon? What time? Oh, any time. When I feel like it, you know. All right, come and have lunch with me. With you? That's the least I can do. No, I couldn't really. It's quite impossible. Why not? That's such a lot to do. But you've got to have lunch. Yes, eventually. I don't mind waiting. Oh, no, please. Now, Alice, uh, is my wife with you? It's David. Oh, yes, I know. We finished sooner than I expected. Hmm? No, she's not. And she's not with Jane, either. Well, I just thought she might be with you. Well, it's not good enough. I'm looking for Miss Bannister Hogg. Not here. Didn't she come in today? Hmm? Gone to lunch. Blast. Any idea where she might have gone? Hmm? She didn't say. But have you no idea at all? Might be at the Happy Haddock. Well, where's that? Where is that? Round the corner. But round which corner? Round the corner. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I only wrote them for fun, really. I never expected them to be published. Anyway, I'm very glad you like them. Oh, yes, I think they're super. Really marvellous. <laughs> I don't think my husband approves. Dobber and the Little People isn't his type of book, I'm afraid. He prefers something a little more meaty. My darling, what a lovely surprise! <laughs> believed it. I told her I thought the door led to the gents. Oh, there, there. <laughs> well, why not? Stranger things have happened. 
seem perfectly reasonable to me. Didn't know she was like that. Hmm? Like what? Nice. How, how do you mean, nice? Uh, attractive, intelligent, rather super, really. Well, of course she's rather super. What did you expect? Oh, I don't know, sort of Mother Hubbard type. Lyle stocking, wooden beads in a bun, that sort of thing. For heaven's sake. You don't think I would have married her if she looked like that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Your things came back today. What things? Clothes from the cleaners. Uh -huh. I can't think how it happened. Accident. Why do these things always happen to you? Fate. Because you go through life in a semi-conscious haze. Nonsense. Obsessed by the social problems of Darlington. Mm. Guess who I bumped into today? Who? Guess. Mao Tse Tung. No. Godfrey Wynne. Caroline. Who? The girl from Granny's attic. How do you mean you bumped into her? The National Gallery. She was looking at the Tintoretto. What were you doing in the National Gallery? I often go. It relaxes me. Well, you never told me that. I didn't think you'd be interested. Not. We had tea together. Who did? The two of us. You mean you and um, uh, Caroline? That's right. Now, what on earth for? It was tea time. Henry rang this morning. Good. He's very disappointed about the American tour. Odd luck, Henry. He's awfully keen for me to go. Hope you told him. Yes, I told him. Can't have you going off to America, my darling. But finish me with a Soviet friendship league. Yes, David. Who's that? Might be Alice. Are you expecting her, then? No, but it might be. Oh. Don't bother. I'll go. You two do know each other, don't you? Yes. No. Well, well yes, you know, what I mean is that we we haven't met socially, uh, just in the shop. Um, the restaurant, when you bumped into the waiter. Oh, yes, of course. Of course. It was awfully funny. Terribly <laughs> droll. It was funny for us, I mean. He knows what you mean, don't you, David? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, will you have a drink? No, thank you. No? Um, how about you, Hilary? Not just now, thank you, darling. Well, I think I will, if you don't mind. I do hope I'm not intruding. No, of course not. It, it's a pleasure. There, what did I tell you? I so wanted to see your flat. Really? It's your wife was telling me all about it this afternoon. About what? The flat. We met in the National Gallery. So I hear. Um, uh, we saw the new Antonio Neoni film last night. Oh, did you enjoy it? We found it interesting. Boring. Y yes, boring, but interesting. Oh, I must go and see it. Oh, do. The, the program starts at 8.35. She doesn't mean now, David. Oh? <laughs> I think I will have that drink after all. Good. Won't you change your mind, Caroline? Um, oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Actually, yes? yes? I didn't just drop in. I came right here on purpose. What for? I'm sorry, David. I've got to tell her. Oh, you do look ill, you know. You should be at home. David, I mean it. Better still, I'll ring for an ambulance. David, I'm Tell me what, Caroline. Don't listen to her. I mean, she's delirious. And David and I have been having an affair. <laughs> an affair? An affair? Is that good? Is that yes, funny? I rather thought you had. Oh, no, no, don't listen to her, Hillary. I, I mean, uh, it's, it's a joke, a joke, a I'm joke. I'm sure, sure Caroline's telling the truth. No! The reason for her to lie. Poor girl's infatuated. I mean, she can't help it. Infatuated with you. Yeah. You make me laugh. I'm sorry, David. I have to tell you. You're out of your mind. Shut up, David. I want to hear what she has But Hillary, you Shut up! Yes, Caroline. Nothing much to say. Thought you were nice. Didn't want to deceive you after we'd met. I felt bad about it. Thank you. It's very honest of you. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. There's no need to be unpleasant. Well, I can think of more tactful ways of going about it. A letter, perhaps? 
or even an anonymous phone call. You're incredible. You're absolutely incredible. Oh. How dare you say that? For playing for sympathy at a time like this. Oh. It's me who's been hard done by, not you. Yes, I know, my darling. I, I do know, and I'm sincerely sorry. I am utterly sincerely I don't care sorry. how sorry you are. You're a dirty old man, and you disgust me. Well, it's been a bit of a shock, I know. The only shock is to find you've been going to bed with such an attractive girl. Oh, thank you very much. Did you guess? Of course I guessed. I'm not completely gaga. I see. I see. What happens now? Well, there is one thing. Yes, Clara. I'd be awfully grateful if we could be, you know, discreet about all this. Of course. You see, my fiancé comes home next month. You what? Shut up, David. He's been in Singapore since last April. He's in rubber. <laughs> Carrie, it's the blasted rain. You can never get a taxi when it's raining. Some people can. Oh? Michael can. Who's me? Mm. Mr. Rubber, I suppose. I thought Hillary behaved rather badly, didn't you? Getting out of control like that? It must be her age. That and Giles being away at school. Don't worry about that. She's basically well adjusted. She doesn't believe in middle class morality any more than I do. We both of us believe in free love in a free society. Yeah, she'll soon get over it. She'll soon realize it was nothing more than a, an experiment, a social experiment. She, she'll see that a man approaching middle age quite often finds it necessary to reassert the baser instincts, or the, the urge to hunt and conquer. Anything the matter? I thought you loved me. Of course I love you. You don't. I'm just a social experiment. Said so. Oh, you said I'm just a social experiment. Yes, I know. You think was right. You are selfish. You're a self-centered, boring, pompous, humpty dumpty. Hey, please shh. Don't you shh me. You seduce me. You made use of me. And now you tell me I'm just a social experiment. You don't understand. What would Michael say if he let me punch you in the face? He'd knock you down. Carrie, listen to me, please. Quite long enough. You're nothing but a shout from the top to bottom of a I thought you were so exciting when I first met you. I thought you were so intelligent and mature, but you're not. You're nothing. You're just a flabby old balloon full of hot air. Harry. You don't care about those people in Darlington. You don't care about anybody apart from yourself. Well, I don't care about you. Oh, I do feel sick, honestly.
Hillary. Hillary, I'll, I'll sleep in the spare room if you like. I mean, I'd quite understand if you wanted me to. Hillary, I'm sorry. I'm deeply sorry. I'm very ashamed. It won't happen again, I promise you. I took her home. And I told her, this must end, I said. She was sick at Hyde Park Corner. <sighs> you know, Hillary, I was wondering, how about you and me going out somewhere for a meal tomorrow night, eh? Somewhere nice. You'd enjoy that, wouldn't you? Which would you prefer? Um, French, Chinese, Italian? Go on, you choose. It's your treat. J j just you tell me what you'd like to do. I'd like to leap out of bed and run naked down the road, yelling and screaming hysterically. I'd like to catch the first plane to New York and have a wild affair with Frank Sinatra. I'd like to throw you down the lavatory and flush you out of my life forever. Yes. Yes, I deserve that. Yes, I did. Every word of it. Yes, indeed. <sighs> Perhaps I ought to go off somewhere. Get things sorted out. Spend six months in a kibbutz, something like that. Get my value straight. Would you like me to? You needn't bother. But do you think I should? Do as you like. I'm going away. How do you mean you're going away? The American tour. I rang Henry. It's all fixed. But, but, but Hillary, you can't. You, you mustn't. Now, look, Hillary, this is no time to go to sleep. We've got to talk about this. Now, listen to me. I will fix it tomorrow. I promise I will. But you can't. You mustn't go away, Hillary. You mustn't. What about me? What about you, David? 